Hi, Maria. How are you today? Hi, John. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm great, thanks for asking. Are you enjoying your English lessons? Yes, I am, but I still struggle with speaking. I feel nervous. Don't worry, Maria. Practice makes perfect. Would you like to have a short conversation in English? Sure, that would be helpful. Thank you for offering. No problem. Let's start with a simple question. What do you like to do in your free time? In my free time, I enjoy reading books and watching movies. How about you, John? I love playing sports and going hiking. It helps me stay active. What kind of books do you usually read? I mostly enjoy reading mystery novels and biographies. They keep me engaged. That's interesting. I'm more into science fiction and fantasy books. Have you read any good books lately? Yes, I just finished reading a detective novel. It had a thrilling plot. Do you have any book recommendations? Absolutely. I suggest you read the Lord of the Rings series. It's a classic and very engaging. Thank you for the recommendation, John. I'll definitely check it out. By the way, how long have you been learning English? I've been speaking English since I was a child, so it's my first language. But I've also studied a few other languages. That's impressive. I hope I can become fluent in English someday. You definitely can, Maria. Just keep practicing, and don't hesitate to ask for help whenever you need it. I appreciate your encouragement, John. I will work hard. Thank you for chatting with me and giving me this opportunity to practice my English. Before we finish, let's practice a bit more. How about we discuss our favorite places to travel? That sounds like a fun topic. I haven't traveled much, but I'd love to hear about your favorite destinations. Well, I've been fortunate to visit many beautiful places. One of my favorites is Paris, France. The city is known for its stunning architecture and delicious cuisine. Paris sounds amazing. I've always dreamed of seeing the Eiffel Tower. Hopefully, I can visit there someday. I'm sure you will, Maria. It's a popular destination for tourists. So, which place would you like to visit the most? I've always wanted to go to New York City. The vibrant atmosphere and iconic landmarks like Times Square and the Statue of Liberty fascinate me. New York City is indeed a vibrant and diverse city. I'm sure you'll have a great time exploring it when you get the chance. Thank you, John. I hope to make that trip a reality soon. By the way, do you have any tips for improving my English pronunciation? Pronunciation can be a bit challenging, but with practice, you can improve. 
one tip is to listen to native English speakers and try to imitate their pronunciation. You can also use online resources and apps that provide pronunciation exercises. That's helpful advice, John. I'll definitely give it a try. I'm determined to become fluent in English. I have no doubt that you'll achieve your goal, Maria. Just keep practicing and never give up. Thank you for your encouragement and support, John. It means a lot to me. You're welcome, Maria. I'm always here to help you with your English learning journey. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need any assistance. I really appreciate that, John. I'll make sure to ask you if I have any questions. Have a wonderful day. You too, Maria. Keep up the great work, and I look forward to our next conversation. Take care. Thank you, John. I'll do my best. Oh, before we end, can I ask you a grammar question? Of course, Maria. I'd be happy to help. What do you need clarification on? I often get confused between there, there, and there. Can you explain the differences? Absolutely. There is used to indicate a place or location. For example, the park is over there. There is a possessive pronoun used to show ownership by a group of people. For instance, they left their books on the table. And there is a contraction of they are. For example, They're going to the movies tonight. Thank you, John. That explanation makes it much clearer. I'll make sure to remember the differences. You're welcome, Maria. Grammar can be tricky, but with practice, you'll become more confident. Is there anything else you'd like to know? Actually, I've been struggling with understanding idioms. They often confuse me. Could you give me an example? Sure. Idioms are phrases that have a figurative meaning different from their literal interpretation. For example, it's raining cats and dogs means it's raining heavily, not literally raining animals. Another example is break a leg, which is used to wish someone good luck, not to encourage them to harm themselves. Ah, oh, I see. Idioms can be quite fascinating and confusing at the same time. I'll keep an eye out for them and try to learn more. That's a great approach, Maria. Idioms are commonly used in everyday conversations, so the more you familiarize yourself with them, the better you'll understand English speakers. Thank you, John. I really appreciate your help and patience. You're very welcome, Maria. I'm always here to support your language learning journey.
Don't hesitate to ask if you have any more questions or need further assistance. I definitely will, John. Thanks again. Have a fantastic day. You too, Maria. Keep up the excellent work. Take care and talk to you soon.